Hello, this is Sister Charlene Winston, and I'm coming to you today with this week's Sunday School Bible Study. We want to thank uh, each of you for joining together as we grow stronger in the Word of God. Amen. We want to thank the Lord that we are gathering together, that we can study His Word, that we become doers of His Word with, with our more understanding, with our uh, knowledge and wisdom going forth to be doers of His Word. Amen. And as, as we become fruitful, as He desires for each of us. Amen. Our lesson for today is a comfortable exile a comfortable exile and we are talking about moses exile to median uh <clears throat> and we will be it will be coming from exodus 2 verses 11 through 25 amen uh we have uh, just a few questions uh concerning this uh passage of scripture uh number one was moses careful not to be seen and explain what the answer is Number two, had anyone seen what Moses did? Number three, what did the statement, who made the a prince and judge, tell us about this Hebrew? Number four, when the Pharaoh heard what Moses had done, what did he want to do to Moses? And number five, what did Moses do? Amen. These are some good questions that we will be uh, that will come from the lesson that we are teaching today, the, to give us uh, knowledge, uh, understanding, and more into insight into what we are studying today. Amen. Uh, I want to ask each of you if something that is said touches your heart, your spirit, or your soul while we're going through this lesson. If you have any question, please feel free to make a comment at the bottom. Uh, below. We will be uh, uh, speaking from uh, all three of the commentaries that I've been using, the, 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 the Discover Books of the Bible on the on internet, as well as uh, Believer's Bible Commentary and um, uh, Matthew Henry's Concise Commentary. So we'll be uh, taking a little bit from each one of them as we study the Word. Amen. We want to also ask that if anything is said, uh, touches your heart, your spirit, please uh, join and subscribe to my channel as I go forth and try and study the Word and uh, bringing forth the knowledge and wisdom that the Lord would have for us to receive uh, as we study His Word and be uh, in the Spirit uh, receiving what God has for each person personally to receive. Amen. Uh, we want to uh, get ready before we get started on this lesson. We're going to have a prayer and then we're going to get started with the lesson. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you are God Almighty. We thank you, Lord, that you are everlasting Father. Lord, I thank you that you are my counselor and that you're wonderful. I thank you, Lord, that you are my Prince of Peace. I thank you for all the blessings that you bestowed upon me, uh, those seen and unseen. We thank you, Lord, for watching over us and guiding us and strengthening us and protecting us up and down a dangerous highway day and night. Lord, we thank you for making a way out of no way, Lord. We thank you for showing us the way to go in Jesus' name. Lord, at this time, we pronounce healing and deliverance and protection for anyone under the sound of my voice. As you said in your word, by his stripes, we are healed and we accept and walk in that healing right now. And we move forward knowing that we are healed healed in Jesus name and we continue to speak those words over our circumstances and situations we want to also pronounce protection for any situation that might cause hurt harm or danger in our in our lives and we claim a change in any circumstance for each of you that is not beneficial to the strengthening and building up of your faith as the Holy Spirit connects to each of you in knowing your needs at this time Lord, we ask that our eyes be open and that we are, that we are able to see clearly and our ears are open that we can hear and that we re receive wisdom, knowledge, and understanding uh, of your word as we go forth and study your word, what the Holy Spirit have for each of us as we study the word of the Lord. 
We thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Uh, we want to ask that if anyone has not accepted Christ, the Lord Jesus, as their Savior, at this time, please stop what you're doing and go forward and accept the Lord as your Lord and Savior, that you have the opportunity that you will receive eternal life. Amen. We want, uh, in order to receive him, you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and receive him as your Lord and Savior this day and go forth and find a, a good Bible-based church one that's doing the word and speaking the word and study the word, become stronger, be baptized in the and in, 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 in be filled with the Holy Spirit and go forth in being doers of his word and not hearers only. Amen. We're going to get ready and get started on our lesson. And our lesson, as we stated earlier, was a comfortable exile, a comfortable exile. And of course, and we are talking about Moses' exile to Midian. And our lesson is coming from Exodus 2, verses 11 through 25. And the scripture lesson text read, And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian, smiting in Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked at this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou thou fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killedest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses, but Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the trough to water their, their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that you are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds, and also drew water enough for us, and watered the flock. And he said unto his daughters, And where is he? Why is it that you have left the man? Call him, that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses Zephra his daughter, and she bare him a son, and he called his name Gershom, for he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. And they cried and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. And God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham and Isaac and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them. Amen. This is a wonderful and powerful lesson. As we see here, uh, Moses, as we studied last week, Moses was being pulled out of the, the river by uh, uh, the uh, Pharaoh's daughter. Now Moses has grown up and he has uh, begun to uh, look upon his people and see their trials and tribulations. And he stepped forward to do something about it, the only understanding that he has uh, of doing something up for him. Amen. And so we're going to get ready and study this lesson. We're going to start with the 11 verse. And it said, It came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied an Egyptian, smited in Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Amen. This is a great uh, portion of this lesson. As we see here, uh, Moses has grown up and it is said that Moses is approximately 40 years old. So 
uh, their uh, idea of a grown man, it differs uh, in time. Uh, in those days, uh, it, you didn't, wasn't considered a grown man until you had got up in age uh, during those times. So as we see here, Moses has got up in age and uh, over the time span, he had I imagine heard uh, different people saying that you're not an Egyptian, you are Hebrew, and why is you trying to act like you're something you're not and point fingers at him and things like that. And so he began to uh, feel that he was out of place in, in the Pharaoh's house. And so he went out to look for him, he said. And as he went out, he saw something that was uh, uh, considered bad to him. He saw that uh, the... the uh, the uh, he the Egyptians was uh, beating one of the Hebrew men, and so when he saw that, he was going to try to uh, 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 handle the situation in his own manner, and so he uh, killed the man. Uh, but as we uh, as the scripture says in Luke eight and seventeen, for nothing is hidden that will not be revealed. We know from Acts 7 and 23 that Moses was 40 years old when he visited his own people. His killing the Egyptian was ill-advised. This zeal outran his discretion. God would one day use Moses to, live, to deliver his people from the Egyptians, but the time had not yet come. Amen. It said the person... He slew, however, being a government officer, he had rendered himself amenable to the laws of Egypt, and therefore he endeavored to screen himself from the consequences of the concealment of the corpse. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. This was a hasty act upon Moses' part. He was not careful in that respect. This act, I believe, was in defense of the Hebrew brother. Whether justified or not, God would use this to further his plan for Moses. We know that we don't always do that which is good, always do that which is right. But when, when the, if the Lord wants to use us, he do fix it to where uh, things are, we are able to be used. Amen. He said, first, he must spend 40 years on the backside of the desert learning of the school of God. God had predicted that his people would be in the land of Egypt as slaves for 400 years, Genesis 15 and 13. So Mo Moses' action was 40 years premature. He needed more training in the solitude of the desert, and the people needed more training in the brick land. The Lord orders all things according to his infinite wisdom. He is not in a hurry, but neither will he leave his people in affliction one moment longer than necessary. Amen. The 13 and 14 verse says, And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together, and he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smitest thou, thou fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou killedest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. As Moses see here, uh, it wasn't the uh, um, Egyptians that uh, brought his, uh, his uh, deed to, to light. It was his own people that brought his deed to light. The one that was doing wrong, he may have been jealous of him, uh, uh, had a envy, envy in his heart against uh, Moses because he had been raised in the palace and he, had, he probably was walking around looking uh, very, uh, as I said, debonair or handsome at, at the time and he had on nice clothes and, and with him coming up to the man, he said, who you think he is trying to tell me what to do? He didn't want him to speak to him on that level because he was try thought that Moses was trying to put him down possibly. Amen. It said, be sure your sins will find you out. Moses intended for no one to see him kill the Egyptian. And now even the lowly Hebrew knew Moses would certainly have to run. Okay, sorry about that. I had a...
had to stop there. But it said, Moses intended for no one to see him kill the Egyptian. And now even the lowly Hebrew knew Moses would certainly have to run to escape judgment. Even though he was a prince, there was already bad blood between the Egyptians and the Hebrews. Moses was afraid. He, being a Hebrew, had little chance for a fair trial. Even though Moses had been taught and was uh, uh, well-educated, more than likely he was uh, taught in archery and he was taught in uh, uh, some type of comeback and horseback riding and, and, and uh, different languages and different information on geography uh, uh, of, of the history of the uh, of the of the land of the people uh, yet and still and even though with this he was still of another nation and he was uh, even though this was his uh, 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 would be his uh, grandfather yet and still he, he his grandfather knew that he was not full of blood so he would uh, have uh, animosity towards him especially since it was a, uh, he was one of the uh, other nation, the Hebrew children. Amen. And so we need to take note of the fact that here, here that God uses imperfect people to serve him. Moses was no exception. All the people uh, that God has brought forth in, the, in uh, uh, many, well, not all, but many of the men and women that God has brought forth, that he did show us that they were not perfect. So we can realize that we, are, with us not being perfect, we still can be used by God as we continue to strive to be better and better, not to lay in our uh, wrongdoing or lay in or continue to stay in the path that we are in. The 15th verse, and when now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. A man said, During the wilderness journey of the Israelites, the Midianites appear in confederation with the Moabites and the Amorites. By the time of Gideon in Judges 6, 1 through 5, the Midianites appear as desert bandits in alliance with the Amalekites. Their record devastation by Gideon's forces may well account for the fact that they disappear from the biblical record thereafter. No substantial archaeological evidence has ever been found of the nomadic Midianites. We need to take a very long and hard look at this scripture, how soon the Pharaoh's heart changed when Moses a Hebrew killed an Egyptian. There was really bad blood between the Hebrews and Egyptians at this point. The Hebrews was treated as subhumanity and with no rights at all. And at the mercy of the cruel Egyptians, Pharaoh approves of this cruel treatment. Even though Moses was raised in his as his grandson, he wants him killed. Moses' fear of the Pharaoh now came into focus. The word median means uh, brawling or contention. This median was a place of refuge for Moses. 16 verse, now the priests of Midian had seven daughters and they came and drew water and filled the trough to water their father's flock. And man, as we see here, uh, there was not a lot of women that did the, uh, was a shepherdess. Uh, they were more like uh, most of the time shepherds, but uh, I guess when the uh, family did not have a lot of boys or uh, had uh, no boys in it, then the girls had to go forth. And man, it said the custom of these people of the East was for the daughters of the, to care for the flock, but not necessarily because uh, we say, see that, um, that there were shepherds that was there to water their flock and the men was the one that was running the girls away and would make them wait until they finished watering their flock. So it wasn't necessary that it was, an, uh, uh, they were the main ones that did the uh, shepherdess, that it was more men that did it than women. It said possibly he had no sons, just the seven daughters were mentioned. This would this word priest here does mean that he was of a priestly order. As I said before, the watering well 
was a good place to me because at least one a day, once a day, the sheep must be watered. Moses would certainly meet someone here at the well. And as we know, this is um, within the last uh, month or so, we've uh, he also heard about uh, the uh, servant that came uh, to to get a wife uh, and he came to the well to uh, and, and was able to find a wife for his uh, master's son at the well. The 17th verse, and the shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. Here again, Moses is the champion of the oppressed, but, was, but has learnt wisdom by the past and uses no unnecessary violence. We also see here that uh, the shepherds uh, uh, seem to would wait until the young women would uh, draw the water, then they would run them away from uh, using the water. They would uh, kind of like use them in, in, in some circumstances, in, in some manner, by allowing them to uh, draw the water and then run them away from it. It said, his air and manner intimidated the wrongdoers, and they allowed the, the maiden's sheep to be watered first. Here we see the shepherds forcing these shepherdess away. Remember, Moses has been trained in fighting as well as being educated in the Egyptian school. Many scriptures indicate that he was a healthy man. These men of Midian didn't have as easy a task as they usually did with this strong man to help Mo to help. Moses helped them water their flock. Moses probably had, like we spoke of earlier, Moses probably had been uh, uh, learned in uh, 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 archery and fighting and and uh, horseback riding and, and, and ways of defending himself. So, so Moses was uh, able to defend himself in the circumstance. So they saw that he wasn't a man that they could push over, so they uh, stood back. Amen. Uh, the 18th verse and when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, how is it that you are come so soon today? And uh, so we see from this scripture that probably these daughters had trouble every day with the shepherds because their dad was used to them being much later coming home. Ruel means friend of God. It appears that Ruel and Jethro was the same person. Ruel was probably his name and Jethro showed his rank or title. Jethro, Jethro means his excellence. The 19th verse says, And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. And it said, these daughters assumed that Moses was an Egyptian. I mean, they couldn't tell that Moses was not an Egyptian because I imagine with his mannerism, his speech, with Moses being raised in the Egyptian palace, that he uh, had a lot of their mannerism and his, uh, their, his attitude was as theirs was. Uh, even though he cared for his uh, people, he still was a lot like the Egyptians. It said, because of his attire and because he came from Egypt. Moses had made himself useful and now is here at the father's home with the seven daughters. The 20th through the 22nd says, and he said unto his daughters, and where is he? Why is it that you have left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. And he gave Moses Zephra his daughter, and she bare him a son, and he called his name Gershom, for he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. As we see here, uh, the man was pleased that someone took a kindness to his daughters and helped them and prevented others from uh, pushing them around and, uh, and was a protector for them. And so Moses was able to come into the home and, and become a help to the man and the lady and the uh, daughters. And, and with that, uh, with him taking them in, and I imagine at some point they learned that he was not an Egyptian, but he was a Hebrew as they was. It said, at, at a well in Midian, Moses helped the seven daughters of the priests of Midian against some slurly shepherds and watered their flocks. The priests of Midian is given two names, Jethro in Exodus 3 and 1 and Ruel in verse 18 which is the same as Regal in Numbers 10 and 29 of the New King James Version. Uh, the Midianites were 
distant relatives of the Hebrews in Genesis 25 and 2. Jethro's daughter, Zephrach, became Moses' wife and her son, Grisham, meaning stranger there, was born to them. The 23rd through the 25th verse said, God hears uh, Israel's groaning. And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage. And they cried and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. And God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham and Isaac and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them. Amen. We see here that finally and eventually that king died. The one that uh, uh, Moses had been raised up under, he died. And so now uh, the, the king that had uh, stepped up, he still kept them under bondage and they began to uh, call unto God. And we uh, call to the Lord that he will hear our cry. Amen. We are to call unto him. Let us not wait till we are at the end of our ropes. Let us call unto him firsthand and he will come unto us. Amen. Uh, and it said, uh, the, in the uh, statement heard and remembered indicate that the Lord's time had come. He would return Moses to Egypt and send him as the answer to the people's prayer. The third chapter, the seventh verse through the tenth. God always has someone ready when his people cry out to him in their need. More importantly, Yahweh revealed himself as the one who hears, remembers, sees, or looked upon, and knows, had respect of his children. The hardship imposed upon Israel finally brought forth a collective cry for relief. The response of God is, is presented in four words, heard, remembered, saw, and took notice. This signal that a response was forthcoming. As God took notice, as God uh, 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 heard their cry, as we remember back in, in, in the New Testament where Jesus, when the uh, blind man was, uh, blind Bartimaeus was called, uh, calling on Jesus, and he says, "Son of David, have mercy on me." And they tell, told him to be quiet and to be to, to hush up. And he continued to cry out, and they say, "And Jesus stood still." Amen. Let us know that when we call out to God, He will stop and hear our cry. Amen. This is a wonderful and powerful lesson. I pray you meditate on this great lesson and have a blessed and wonderful week.